Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. All right, seven minutes after nine o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. This is a topic that we're all passionate about. It's immigration. I, I suppose that's probably a true statement that we're all relatively, at least, passionate about immigration. Mm-hmm. I am the child of, of an immigrant. My mom uh, came here when she was three years old, and that would have been 1928, I believe, she came over here. Um, her father came over here, my grandfather, a year earlier. He had... Uh, the reason that the family, the rest of the family didn't come over for years because my mom had some kind of a fever, I think rubella or something. Um, but anyways, I'm very, I grew up in New York, so I was always familiar with the Statue of Liberty. We all learned about the the poem from oh, Ezra, oh gosh, the poem on the on the base of the statue. Mm-hmm. You know, we welcomed yeah, the, the huddled yeah. masses and all Can't that. I remember who wrote it. So, uh, um, but immigration is still a, a reason why well, the, there's a reason why we have so many immigrants is people want to be here because we've created a pretty nice country. Um, and yet the, the whole idea of immigration has rules associated with it um, that we, I guess, we either choose to enforce or not to enforce. And that to me seems to be the big argument. How do we, how, what what rules do we do we apply to people who want to come into this country. Does that seem fair mm-hmm. without trying to sound like I'm taking sides? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Carol M. Swain, she's been talking and writing about this forever. I found, I think, another book by the same title, Debating Immigration, also written by Dr. Swain. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was 2007 or so. The first edition. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So she's been looking at this uh, subject for a very long time. She's an award-winning political scientist, a Pulitzer Prize nominee, a former professor of political science at Vanderbilt University, um, and she's on the phone. So it's an honor to say good morning. Dr. Carol M. Swain, good morning. Good morning to you. Where are you? Where are you calling from? Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA. I love Nashville. How did you How did you fare for the storm? Did, did it affect you guys? We didn't even get rain. Oh, so really? No, we weren't affected. Oh, my. Oh God. my. Very lucky. So it, it's, when you wrote this book originally... Was the was the political climate the way it is today? I'm trying to remember if we had as much of a debate about immigration as we do today. Well, I can tell you that um, in 2007 we were having uh, a debate about immigration. I don't know if you remember. It was like freedom rides that uh, people who supported uh, legalizing uh, illegal, uh, whatever you want to call them, uh, legally, it's illegal alien, even though people find that uh, offensive. That's the federal government definition. Well, there were freedom rides and marches, and that was during a time when people were being interviewed and they were talking very boldly in front of cameras about being undocumented. And uh, m- debating immigration is a collection of essays we don't all agree, and uh, that's why it's a debate. Uh, in the uh, second edition, I do have an idea of what comprehensive immigration reform should look like. And I believe that we make a mistake when we do it piecemeal. piecemeal. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been a lot of pressure on Congress to legalize the DACA uh, recipients, the people that uh, were protected by the executive order that President Obama uh, uh extended towards them. It was really an administrative statement and not an executive order. Uh, But immigration, in my opinion, needs to be reformed because one part affects another part. And we focus on illegal immigration when I think that we need to focus also on the barriers that make it difficult for people who want to come here legally. Mm -hmm. They have to get at the back of the line. Yeah. Okay. So, so the part about it that I just don't understand is is why does it uh, take so long to legally become a citizen of this country? Why does that take so long? Do you mean for people who come here legally and they follow the process? Right. Somebody who does it the way my mom's parents did it, because I'm sure my mom was three years old. She didn't do anything. But with the way they did it, and, and they had to wait a year because my mom was sick, and that was one of the immigration rules. You can't bring somebody into the country with rubella or whatever she had. 
And now they, you know, you can come in uh, with HIV infections and other diseases. So we've we've relaxed those statements that would keep people out because they had diseases. And I think that, you know, the process of naturalization, uh, it takes time for people that are coming from another nation to learn about the country that they are uh, are becoming a part of. And they're expected to know certain things about the Constitution. Uh, You know, if they actually study to become a citizen, they probably know uh, our history better than some Americans do. Mm -hmm. They have to really study the Constitution and be able to answer questions about it. So I think it's good that there is a process. I think it's terrible that we don't have enough resources to process the applications quickly enough for yeah. people who may be yeah. here legally on visas, and they're trying to renew those visas. Uh, in in your book, you have uh, various es- essays, not by, not just by yourself, but by other experts in the field, and the topics that they address are very fascinating. Well, thank you, and, and you know that was the purpose of having a a lot of different voices. And one of the reasons I was not an immigration scholar, I got interested in the topic for a couple of reasons. But one thing, I'm a, a pretty devout. Christian, haven't been always, but uh, doing this early debate, whenever I did something as a citizen about uh, illegal immigration, I was told that because I was a Christian, I had to be in favor of open borders, open doors, and the scriptures in the Bible about the stranger, and that those scriptures were quoted. And so I was very curious about what the Bible had to say about that. So one of the uh, contributors is someone who also uh, faced that same situation. And so he looks at uh, a biblical perspective that's really not open borders. It looks at um, the purpose of government, you know, based on the Bible, the difference between ancient Israel and America. Ancient Israel was a theocracy ruled by God. And America, you know, is not that kind of nation. We are a republic, a democratic republic. And, uh, and then the role of, of, of um, government, and then part of the role of the government, you know, is to uh, protect the citizens. The government is not the church. What the church chooses to do uh, can be, uh, should be different from what the government does because they have different roles. So that's one chapter. And then I wrote one about the Congressional Black Caucus and how well they represent uh, African-Americans and the downtrodden. And on the, on the issue of immigration, they used to be very active uh, protecting the rights of people who tend to be uh, low-income, low-wage uh, workers. Uh, and so they favored restrictions and they favored uh, enforcement of the law. That began to change when their district started to become more Hispanic. And so for a lot of the black members of the Congress, they've been missing in action on immigration. And... God, I, I, one of the things that surprises me too, or concerns me, is that is the um, ma- making the the enforcement agency ICE the the target. Uh, they're not the ones who make the rules; they're the ones who enforce the rules. Um, can you comment on that a little bit? It, it seems like yeah. it, uh, we're 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 aiming at the wrong people. Those people who are not me, but those people who don't like the way it's done are picking on the enforcers. Uh, right, and also the Border Patrol, they are individuals like us who have a job to do. And in a democratic republic like ours, you know, we, the people, we're the ones that elect those legislators. They pass the laws. Right. If we don't like the laws that are on the books, you know, we have a way to change those laws. And I strongly believe in the rule of law. I think if you don't enforce laws in one area, they begin to affect other areas. And you can see that today, uh, everything, many things that we thought about or took for granted about America, the presumption of innocence, the person is guilty, excuse me, innocent and to proven guilty. Now they may be guilty and to proven innocent. Mm-hmm. That's not the American system. And I think that when you get a breakdown in the rule of law, it causes the whole system to kind of collapse. Yeah, that's, that's well said. Uh, I, I, I wish we had longer to talk. Robin told me that we have to wrap it up by 20 after. Um, but the book has been around for a while. So is this edition uh, a, a separate, different or newer uh, essays? It, it is. In fact, I uh, deal with uh, uh, President Trump's 
proposals because we know that when he launched his campaign, one of the things that uh, positioned him ahead of all the other candidates was that he was the only one talking about immigration and uh, about enforcement and crime. And the American people, that, that resonated with them because we do have an immigration problem. A survey that was taken in July showed that it was like one of the number one issues for the American public. They're not concerned about the economy now. They are concerned about the immigration. And so uh, I talk about how my comprehensive immigration plan uh, differs from, you know, what the president has put forth and, uh, and just how President Trump's initiative, how they compare to President Obama's. Mm -hmm. So it's the current book, and there are more contributors, and I think that uh, people who want to know more about the issue can really be educated, whether they're policymakers or home homemakers. Anyone that wants to truly understand immigration, there are essays in there that you'll find of interest. I, 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 and go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, doctor. Go ahead. There's one that's really important, I think, is that uh, there's a guy at UC San Diego, John Scretney, and he has an article that shows that employers prefer uh, immigrants to white or black workers, and that despite the Civil Rights Act, that many of them just blatantly discriminate against American workers because they don't feel like American workers uh, have the right work um, ethics. Uh, ethics. And so that despite the civil rights laws, discrimination is going on, but it's against blacks and whites. It's against American. Mm. Well, and, and and if that's true, then why don't they just do what they need to do to to get all their paperwork in order? And then their their good work ethics will be uh, part of the, the whole, uh, you know, uh, competition landscape. And, and everybody who wants a job, but hey, if you're not a good worker, we shouldn't hire you. And but but we just ask that you are here with ha after having been vetted so that we know that you're not carrying a disease, that you're not going to be a mass murderer, you know, that you, you haven't done something in your country that makes us want to keep you in your country. Well, I would say that uh, some people would argue now, this is not my argument, Is some people, is that they work harder because they are undocumented. And once they become legal, they're just like Americans. They want um, you know, job benefits, regular work hours, vacation. Uh, and so for some people, there may be an incentive to keep them in that wow. position because once they're legalized, they're going to be just like everyone else. Mm, wow. That, wow. That, that, that's, that's crazy. That's borderline um, indentured servant. Yeah. Um, doctor, I, I love the conversation. Thank you for being on the air. I found the book on Amazon. Do you have a website you want to direct us to? Yes, uh, the book is Debating Immigration, the second edition, and it can be uh, ordered from Amazon or any place where books are sold. And you can follow me on uh, Facebook at Professor Carol M. Swain. That's my public page. Twitter at Carol M. Swain. Okay. Uh, Dr. Swain, thank you for taking time to be with us today. Thank you. Bye. We'll be right back. This is The Source, WOCA Ocala. PPI is a networking group formed to serve the realtor and small business community. It primarily serves the real estate and construction industry, but is open to all businesses that provide any service or product to the real estate business community.